So, okay. Oh, uh, since the last time, that, that space shuttle is, it's been frustrating me. I have flown this. I decided to fly it a few times while not recording the uh, uh, vocal commentary. Uh, I am convinced that this is a viable spacecraft and aircraft. Uh, it's just very tricky to pilot. Uh, this actually doesn't bother me so much. Well, it kind of bothers me in that it's, it's just frustrating to use. But you realize in trying to closely mimic a, the real aircraft, the real shuttle, it barely works. The, the real thing barely works. It's, it's barely viable as a glider, and it is incredibly difficult to land the thing. Uh, the real thing also has this fly-by-wire system, which uh, allows you to, uh, you know, allows the vehicle itself to correct for all kinds of uh, just the tiny little errors that you have in handling the thing. I believe that in order to make this thing more easily pilotable and more easily landable, we would get away from uh, being a, a faithful configuration uh, than the, what the original goal all along has been to, for, for this one to mimic the actual space shuttle. This thing, it will work. You just you just have to be, uh, do a very steep uh, approach to landing. Don't let your airspeed get below, say, like, you know, 130, 140 <laughs> uh, equivalent airspeed and pitch back and land at the last possible second. Uh, it will work. As such, I am going to stop working on it. Uh, I'm done with it. I'm kind of sick of it. And really, the whole time, the, the previous shuttle and this one, this has all, in my mind, has always been a, a warm-up. This is the preliminaries before getting into the project that I am interested in. I want to make a super space shuttle. I want to make a shuttle of, in my mind, I can I see the configuration being very similar to ones that I've had in the past when I did whenever I recorded the episode for the uh, uh, for the the YouTuber in the Moon Space Station. That shuttle that was that was an early prototype of this. This is going to be much larger, much more capable. It's going to be able to fly like an airplane. It'll have jet engines to maneuver around in the atmosphere. Um, it'll be able to take off from a runway. Probably not, you know, I'm not going for a takeoff from a runway and getting into orbit, but just, just uh, without, a, without a payload, it'll be able to, you know, take off from runway, fly to somewhere else on curb and land. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll state my goal is I want this thing to be able to, to carry a two and a half meter diameter payload weighing 100 tons into low curb and orbit. That's the goal. Uh, this that's the goal um, I'm thinking I've been thinking I'm gonna try this I had I used this name for a series that never got really got working before this one is the rock okay rock one uh, let's go I also want it to be able to carry some Kerbal crew some passengers because there are two crew that are in there but I also want a crew tank yeah let me see this one I think this carries like four Kerbals or something like that. Good. Yeah, we'll have one of those. And let me get into utility. Uh, the docking port, the custom docking port. There we go. That'll fasten up on top of the crew tank. There, so we can dock to things. Won't that be nice? Okay, so there's a front end of it. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's give it all these large, here, not the S2, no, these guys here. I know I will want at least two of those, but probably more. There we go. And let's get back into my test payloads, these large SRB pieces. These are useful as a test payload because... Um, these, uh, with, without being t attached to the advanced SRB nozzle, uh, these, these won't ever light. They're just 
uh, inert cargo, and they're heavy. So, would you please just attach onto there? Oh, I remember these, these kinds of issues dealing with this design in the past, yeah. Alright, so, we want like five of those, don't we? Yep, okay, all right, and just ping a whole bunch of struts in there. That's that's going to be, that's my test payload. So all my various, a lot of, a lot of my various testing and operation of that thing, that's what we're going to use. Okay, save sub-assembly. This goes in probes. And this is a large, whoop, large test weight. Save. Okay, good. So there's the general fuselage we're going to be working with as, as far as the cargo bay is concerned. So what, let's go ahead and hang a, another piece on the end of that. One of these right there. Hello? Yeah, like that. Good. Actually, I tell you what, I want to hang this one on the end down here. Like that. Good. Okay, uh, struts. We want to cross brace the whole extended payload cargo bay. Give it some structural strength and rigidity and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, yep. Because we're now, for the time being, we're going to treat it just as a closed fuselage. Yep, it's going to be fairly ginormous and huge and other such phrases like that. That's what this thing is going to be. Uh, Engine-wise, what do I want to do for engines? I i don't know, I'm half thinking about... I would like to go ahead and use this just because it looks so very, very cool. Uh, the guy made a... Uh, this is a, a highly detailed... This is a copy of the, the, the F1... The, rocket motors that they, they used on the Saturn V. But I haven't got permission from the guy to to uh, share a rescaled version of it. So, can't do it. Not gonna do it. Instead, we're gonna go with this. There we go. Because we're going to be doing things, changing all kinds of parameters on this What's It. So, what are the kind of parameters that I'm interested in changing? I don't like having those engines sticking out there like that, looking all ugly-like, so... Uh, grab that. Turn surface attachment enabled. Give us like 15 degree in the thing. So that'll help us find the middle point. Give it just... Yeah, one click up like that. Oops, 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 oops. Yeah, like that. How about that, huh? Doesn't that look cool? I think it looks cool. Uh, except I don't like that we've got the this part showing up inside the exhaust bell. That could cause problems. Let's do it this way. Structural part. Here we go, like that. Now we'll try attaching it to this one. See if we can resolve that issue. Ooh, I think that issue is very nicely resolved. Got a little bit of angle to it. Good. Yeah, yeah, that looks all nice and sexy. Uh, let me see. We'll want to strut that thing down. Um, let me see here. So, the things I want to do, I want to have some kind of... Um, OMS engine. Now I'm thinking, do I want to go ahead and work with these Sabre engines at this point, or not? These things can be useful. Uh, but I'm thinking if I end up, say, for example, I want to use this machine in my uh, say in some kind of collect career mode. No, uh, no, no Sabre engines because that could be considered advanced tech. No, we're going to make this one relatively low tech. We are going to uh, use these engines over here though. Yeah, these, these are good. We like them. I'll tell you what, first thing, 
first, let's go ahead and see what we can do. Adding a conventional OMS. Yeah, we're going to leave the thrust as is. Uh, gimbal, gimbal range. I'm going to increase that. Give it maximum possible, all the way up to 20. Okay, tweakable parameters. Uh, let's go with this one here and gimbal range. Let's go uh, drop it down to say five. Yeah, we'll start with five. Okay, and now in order to kind of disguise that the shape that they have there, I mean they're disguised. The fact they're just kind of hanging on the edge. Uh, let's go with the small tail piece that is quite often so useful. Yeah, this guy. Actually, hang on here. We can probably get away with. Can we convince this thing to attach to. Here we go. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, so those all together. So, uh, OMS were a, a, a you know, thrust of like 200. So. That that should be well enough once this thing is actually up up in outer space. That'll definitely be enough to keep things moving. Let's see, okay, so things we'll need. Of course, we're going to need wings all in here, but we're also going to need uh, the uh, engines, the uh, the atmospheric engines. Uh, just previous experience. Uh, in order to get enough power and, and with a vehicle this size, I'm going to say that we're my initial plan is I'm going to use these engines and I want to use four of them total. So two in each side. And since all these have their own fuel supply separate from so that should be save a whole lot of drama <laughs> in fighting with those up there. Let's take a look at one thing. How is this going to interact with that door as it opens and closes? It's something I wish all the other animated parts available in this game. Okay, well that turns out being kind of ugly, doesn't it? Another alternative would be... Whoops, hang on. Hang on. You change the arrangement of these guys. This instead. I think I may like that better instead of trying to do something tricky in there. Okay, okay, yeah, and for the, yeah, we'll be able to conceal various intakes and things for those elsewhere in the machine. Uh, let's strut them right now while I'm thinking of it. This all works. Tell you what, let's just hang uh, something aerodynamic on the front of those, since I'm not just to make them disappear into the wing that'll eventually be there. I should change the mass of those. I mean, it's my tailpiece. Weigh whatever I say it weighs. I don't know. Maybe that's kind of a curmudgeonly attitude. If I can get a connect, yeah, those. Well, actually, I suppose I'll stick that on there, and now, and okay, yeah, that, that'll get, it'll show us where the leading edge of the wing is going to be. But at the moment, now let's get into the procedural wings. These guys. Because you gotta, you gotta have wings, you know? You gotta have them. Yeah, stick them right about there. Grow that wing root until it is just absolutely ginormous. And yeah, we're still starting to get a little bit of into... That piece there. Okay, okay. Uh, pull this whole structure backwards like this. And let's get that. See how this part lines up so very nicely with that corner and the wing, the overall wing thickness perfectly matched. I really like these dimensions. This is good. Very, very pleasant. 
Let's think about how adventurous do I want to be with this wing design, huh? Ah, save what I have so far. Keep sometimes I forget to save. Oh, this thing is going to be fun. <laughs> so we're going to set it up. We're going to test it out as an airplane first. Uh, get it up so we can take off, can fly around, you know, take off from our, run our runway, fly around, land on a runway. Uh, and then once that is all working, then we'll go and we'll start making it into a spaceship. <laughs> 